Hello everyone, today I want to take you on a garden tour of our vegetable garden and this garden has been, been neglected for about a month or so, maybe a little bit more than that because I haven't been able to get to it and I want to kind of take you around and show you what a garden that has been neglected for that period of time looks like. It is on irrigation, so it has been receiving water from the irrigation and also from all the rain that we've been getting and today it is also supposed to rain. It has been raining throughout the evening and uh, it kind of drizzled a little bit earlier and it looks like it's going to rain again. So let's see if we can this and maybe some water this uh, before it starts raining. So let me go ahead and take you and show you what we have. This is yummy. So this right here is one of our onion beds and also planted with it I have some celery. I have the purple plume celery and celery planted in here. I'm not sure which is which. We kind of I did not pay attention to the tags and I mixed them up while I was planting. Uh, so it's going to be a nice surprise. <laughs> I also planted the celery a little bit too close to the other celery because I forgot what they were and I didn't pay attention to the tags. But anyways, uh, let me bring you a little bit closer to kind of show you what's going on in this bed. I mean, look at this celery over here. And <laughs> my daughter over here is uh, gladly showing us how it looks like. <laughs> it's almost her height. I mean, it is in the bed, but the bed is pretty low in here. Uh, the soil starts at about uh, five inches or so from this raised bed edge. So it starts about right here. And all this is celery and look at it it's gigantic and that is due to the nutrients that are present in this bed and also I did amend it with organic fertilizer and this celery is doing amazing although it looks like I'm starting to see here that maybe it might be bolting over here some of them I did notice one of the onions did bolt and I've never had onions bolt on me before and I think that's just due to the extreme change of temperatures and we have been having some nights in the 60s and then again the days are sometimes in the 90s so that can lead to the onions bolting because of these extreme changes in temperatures from cold to hot uh, so I only saw one onion that bolted, hopefully not of the other onions bolted, and when onions Mama. bolt, hold on sweetie. There's a bee can't fly. Oh, no, it's just walking looking for, uh, it's, don't leave it alone sweetie, it's looking for water. When onions bolt, that decreases their lifetime, uh, their storage life, so if you are planning on storing your onions for a long period of time, like throughout the winter in a root cellar or in a cold storage space, that will cause your onions to have a much shorter lifetime. So what I will do, I will show you what I will do with those onions, hopefully in a different video if I only have one of them, that's okay. But for me, I don't have a root cellar, so my onions are not going to last for that long anyways, so I have to kind of figure out how to store them in the best ways possible so that I'm able to use them throughout the year. And you can start seeing that some of these onions already starting, their necks are starting to flop, and that's an indication that these onions are ready to be harvested. And we have some good size on a lot of them, I think. And um, you know, not all of them are going to be gigantic and that's just how it is. When you buy onions from the store, uh, they sell you the best of the crop. And that is not to say that every onion that those growers grow uh, is going to be gigantic. The smaller onions are going to be sold separately, maybe like pearl onions or something like that. But they will always sell you the best of the crop. And I know that because my parents used to be in this business. They used to produce tons of the same sort of crop, like let's say tomatoes, for example. They would pick the best and largest tomatoes and they would put the largest tomatoes on top 
and the smallest tomatoes go on the bottom of the if they're selling them in bulk and the small tomatoes they would sell them separately to maybe people who want to can or uh, for a much cheaper price and that is what's happening with onions or any any crop that you purchase from the store they're not going to sell you the crop that is looking the least pristine or uh, the lowest uh, quality of the things that they are producing so even my point is to say that even the people who are uh, experts uh, per se at this uh, growing business uh, that produce tons and tons of food for all the people around the world even those people end up with uh, types of crops all sorts of crops that do uh, that are uh, not the best quality to sell to the stores or to sell to the consumers so they have to kind of change the way how they are being sold maybe they are being canned or maybe they are being uh, sold as a different product and uh, maybe they're being diced and put in the, into the freezers and sold to you as uh, onions in the freezers or whatever it is the crop that that is uh, that's how you are how that's how it is being marketed because also they're not going to just waste their products and um, Lose money on this because that is their livelihood so all this to say if you are growing vegetables or flowers or whatever it is you are growing not all your crops are going to look the same. You are going to have some that are going to be large and some that are going to be small. Do not be disappointed by that because that's just nature. This is how it works. Uh, and if you get some large ones, that is awesome. If you get some small ones, that's also great. You are going to be able to use them for, an other, for different applications. Uh, and be encouraged by this. Uh, hopefully you are encouraged by this message, message that not all your crops are going to be 100% the best quality and the best crop uh, crops in the world. Now, onions do not like weed competition, but this bed has been free of weeds for most of the season. And I did end up with some of the weeds in here just because, you know, I wasn't able to come here. So these weeds are super easy to pull. This is just uh, the sorrel. And this is an edible plant if you want. You could eat it, but it is high in oxalic acid. So just be mindful of that. And it does look a little bit like clover, but it's not clover. And they produce these yellow flowers. Now, I said just you do your research on this and uh, don't consume anything unless you know 100% you are 100% sure what it is because some plants are lookalikes and they look like all right sweetie they look like plants that are edible but they are extremely poisonous so you want to be careful about that don't consume th something unless you are 100% sure what that plant is I will be coming here and weeding this bed of course and allowing these onions to grow a little bit more so that they can mature fully and then once they are ready to be harvested that's when I will come and harvest them all let's move on to this bed over here this is my one of my cabbage beds Again, it has been overtaken by weeds. Uh, this is one of the edible weeds, but you can keep it or you can <laughs> toss it as a plant that you do not want to grow here. But I also have some parsley growing in between and that is supposed to deter insects because of its fragrance. And also I will be using it for uh, culinary purposes, of course. And this right here is what's it called some something mustard I don't remember exactly what what it's called but this plant will overtake your space if you do not control it so I will be pulling these pretty quickly out of here now I haven't sprayed in here at all and you can notice all this bug damage over here so I will be coming and spraying with some BT which is an, or an organic pesticide and it, it helps control caterpillars and uh, soft-bodied insects, the ones that ingest the leafy matter, 
and uh, the caterpillars that are on these uh, plants are from the cabbage moth which is the white moth it sometimes it looks a little bit on the lime green side and it has these uh, little white dots on it sometimes a, a black you might see a black dot on it and these are the ones that will lay their eggs on the cabbages and all the brassica family and they will the ca the eggs will hatch and will produce caterpillars and those caterpillar ca caterpillars are the ones that eat your cabbage plants so uh, by spraying BT on it once these caterpillars ingest the uh, plant matter they are going to die that's how it works in here I also have some gladiolas that came back from last year so I pulled up all, all the gladiolas I thought from last year but these came up and look at them they're blooming and I also took some blooms to use in some bouquets and look at them I love I love these gladiolas and I got these corms last year from Dollar Tree and I planted them not expecting much of them but I mean look at them they are amazing and I love the color on these gladiolas I don't know if you guys can see it if the camera is picking up the color but they have this bright magenta color on the inside like in stripes and some polka dots on the inside and the light color pink on the outer edges I mean look at it it's amazing and look at the purple also on these I don't know what they're called uh, stamens stamens I think that's what they're called it's just so beautiful it's all the cool colors together and I love how they work together so these came up on their own uh, from little corms that multiplied from last year's gladiolas and also another thing that came up on their own and I have tons of them over here and over there and I am assuming these are from some butter, butternut, butternut squash that I buried in the soil to act as compost as fertilizer and I believe the reason why they're so yellow is because just they've been receiving so much water with all the rain and the irrigation because I haven't been able to turn off the irrigation when it was raining so a lot of their leaves yellowed but they are producing so much i mean look at these look at these butternut squash actually these are acorn squash i thought they were butternut squash but i just saw some acorn squash on them right here and whoop there we go I don't know if you guys can see them it's so hard to show you because of all the leaves there we go so this one is producing I don't know about this one over here but there is so much so many butternut squash on this plant so many and this is actually more than one plant it's a whole bunch of them growing from the same location this is the bed adjacent to the cabbage bed over here and again there are some weeds here and there and the sugar snap peas are done i was able to come here maybe like three times and harvest off of them and the rest they just went to seed so i will be coming here and harvesting the seeds when i will have the time for that I'll, i need to make the time for this so that we don't lose all these seeds because I love saving seeds from year to year because that just guarantees that you are going to have that plant let's say a disease happen with the growers who produce these seeds or uh, maybe th there are no seeds available for sale or uh, whatever it is that may come or a ban on certain seeds you never know what could come in this I can hear the water turning on the other <laughs> no bed next to me uh, so you never know what could happen in this world that we live in because a lot of these things have happened already uh, so by saving your own seeds if you are able to you guarantee that you are going to have a harvest next year because you can plant the seeds that you 
saved and save some of them for the year after in case if you are not able to save some seeds later so that you can make sure to be able to also plant that seed not just the next year but the year after as well let's move over to this bed over here and in this bed again lots of cabbage in here but there's also lots of this mustard plant I forgot its name and some grasses growing in here we have this red cabbage is starting to head up and the rest are just beginning there are some late varieties and some early varieties so I will need to weed all these beds all of them <laughs> and uh, maybe amend them maybe because the weeds probably consumed a lot of the nutrients and uh, hopefully if I'm able to put down some mulch or something so that I can protect the soil and reduce the amount of weeds now let's move on move over to this bed over here and here I planted tons of eggplants because I love eggplants and I preserved a lot of them last year and I love the way how I preserve them so hopefully this year I will be able to share with you guys how to preserve these uh, eggplants so that you can use them for throughout the winter. Looks like this bed either has some nitrogen defi deficiency of some sort or something happening in here. But this bed is also filled with forget-me-nots. The forget-me-nots <laughs> overtake this bed every single year because they just keep seeding themselves over here. And I don't mind because I love them. But I also want these eggplants to, you know, do well. So uh, I will be clearing the weeds around them and the forget-me-nots so that they can grow a bit bigger. But they are starting to produce. So you can see right here we're starting to get some fruits off of them and I won't be able to harvest them yet because they're too small I want them to put on some growth last year's eggplants were amazing uh, this year though they were stunted because they stayed in their pots for too long and also after I planted them I thought I turned the irrigation on in this bed but it turns out uh, maybe like two or three weeks after I came here and it uh, looks like I did not turn the irrigation on in this bed. So they were stunted for so many different reasons. One, they did not have water. Two, they were planted too late. So they had tons of roots on them and these little tiny pots and they should have been planted over here a long time ago. But it has been a busy year for us. So. It's okay, you know, I'm not counting it all lost. I see a lot of progress in this garden. And even though I wasn't able to plant everything according to my plan and finish all the things that I wanted to finish in here, I'm trying not to beat myself over it, over the head with it or over it, whatever it is you say, uh, because I just want to enjoy my garden. and. I feel like every year I just kind of feel like oh this garden is not producing so as well as I like it to and then every year I end up with lots of produce and healthy plants and all the things you know it doesn't come out the way how I want it uh, with all the plans that I planned for it but I'm trying to kind of give myself grace and accept the fruits that this garden gives me uh, regardless of whether I'm able to be here every single day or whether I'm not able to come here for a month or more. So also in this bed right here where the cabbage is, I have some Egyptian onions from a friend and they're doing amazing and they're starting to put on these bulbs and these are the ones that they plant themselves with so I could just easily take these and plant them in the garden if I want to or I can let them fall and plant themselves like this is what they do over here so they would bend and then they would fall to the ground and plant themselves and they are called walking onions for this reason because that's what they do so throughout the year I would have these onions over here to harvest from for fresh using they do have a different flavor. Their flavor is a lot stronger than the regular onions. Uh, they're kind of pungent, but they are delicious. And this is kind of the flavor that I'm used to uh, when it comes to onions anyways, because uh, that's the flavor that the onions have 
in the area where I grew up. So this kind of feels like adds this uh, homey feel to our dishes whenever I cook with these uh, onions. Over here I have some strawberries that just planted themselves here and uh, they produce but then the birds come and eat them so I do have to take them out of here and plant them in one of the strawberry beds that I'm designating as a strawberry bed. This is this bed was supposed to be the parsley bed but again I wasn't able to plant parsley and now the weeds are like taller than me I mean look at that so tall in here so I will have to come here and clear all these weeds this over here is the garlic bed and the garlic should have been harvested like two weeks ago or so and it's totally dry now and hopefully it's not rotting I turned the water off of it uh, and I will have to harvest it pretty soon and I'm not going to harvest it today because it did rain last evening so maybe tomorrow uh, on a day when it's when it's dry and I also wasn't able to weed the these things that I mulch with uh, what's it called um, the straw so I think this is wheat or barley I'm not sure but either way I need to pull these out so that they don't see themselves everywhere here they're super easy to pull so that's not a big deal this is another onion bed over here this is my red and yellow onion bed and oh look at that grass my goodness it is so tall <laughs> and it's producing these it's a gorgeous seed head but I do not want this grass here and I tried my best to keep this bed cleared of weeds as much as I could I mean whenever I came here to harvest something and that's the to the extent that I came here to it wasn't I wasn't even able to come here and harvest that often I would pull whatever weed I was able to pull from this bed because I wanted these onions to have a good chance at growing their bulbs and you can see these red onions some of them don't grow that big anyways the variety just doesn't grow that big but they are putting on lots of growth I don't know if you guys can see and same with the yellow onions over here now when again when the next bend like that this is time to harvest them and uh, the, I will be harvesting this bed pretty soon as well and this bed over here that is way taller than me this is my height and this is the weeds height you can see how much bigger it is than I am how much taller it is so this bed over here was supposed to host the uh, all the root vegetables that I wanted to plant like the turnips and radishes and all these things and the cool weather vegetables and the Swiss chard kale and all that but I wasn't able to get to planting all these things so I'm hoping I will be able to get to planting a fall crop over here and even if not in this bag maybe somewhere else where I harvest that area and then plant it I'll do that and but I mean, you can see how healthy all these weeds are and this is due to the fact that I put tons of compost in this bed just from our kitchen scraps I didn't do anything extra this is soil that I got last year and uh, the soil was terrible and I just started adding in organic matter from the kitchen I tossed it in here and this is what it does now all this matter starts breaking down and feeding the soil and when the rain comes and it washes all that down into the soil and then when I'm ready to plant it I will be pulling all these out and I will toss these into the large compost pile that I'm making and then I will be tilling the soil just a little bit just so that I can put the compost that I put on top into the soil and maybe add just a little bit of small layer of this, this organic matter from these uh, plants over here the ones that do not propagate themselves with uh, stems with cuttings uh, so that um, they don't propagate themselves so what I will do is I'll take the plants that do not propagate themselves in this manner and cut the seeds head off and put them on top of the soil this way as they decompose 
uh, they will uh, lots of nitrogen would go deep down into the soil and also they will protect the surface layer of the soil so when I'm ready to plant I'll just push them away or I'll dig them into the soil and they will add even more organic matter and the bacteria in the soil will start to feed on them and the worms in the soil and they will start decomposing them and turning them into amazing organic matter and this is the method that I use in gardening and it has produced the best results for me I've been gardening this way since we bought this house for uh, almost eight years now uh, and uh, I can testify that this method is the best method ever that I've ever experienced and uh, I do use fertilizer with this method as well uh, just to add in any elements that the beds might be missing because the soil does sometimes does not contain all the elements in it and you can do a soil test if you want to see what kind of elements your soil is missing or you can just use an organic general uh, all-purpose fertilizer and that's going to cover up a lot of your bases and if you're still having problems with your plants then you can go ahead and do a soil test to see what you need to fix in your in your soil and then you can bring in those specific elements or the organic elements and put them in your soil according to the recommended doses so that you're not filling your soil with tons of these elements for just no reason whatsoever. I'm sorry guys, it's super windy and I hope that the sound is okay. It's also super hot. <laughs> so let me turn you around and show you the rest of the beds. In this bed right here, we have some peppers of all different varieties and also tons of potatoes that just came up on their own from last year. And it looks like pretty soon I'll be able to come and harvest some of them. And the ones on this side are the ones I planted myself. And over there, there were potatoes that planted themselves and I also interplanted them with some myself just to complete the row because I don't wanna plant something other than potato in the same bed so that I don't have to dig around those plants. Now, over here, even though the potatoes are planted in the same bed as these peppers, I have a lot of peppers on this side that are far away from the potatoes and hopefully the ones over here that are close to the potatoes won't get damaged when I dig the potatoes up and uh, to store them. But look at these peppers. Uh, I mean, they're not super healthy, but they are producing tons. They do need, need nitrogen, I can tell that. And I can notice the difference between this bed over here and this bed over here. Now, I wish I showed you this at a different time, but this bed was doing so well and the plants were gigantic i mean you can see the potatoes are flopping over and they the leaves are gigantic in comparison to the bed that i just showed you and they are doing amazing and these are seed potatoes that i purchased and uh, planted them in here some of them unfortunately are uncovered and hopefully we'll see hopefully we'll be okay i think the plants themselves covered them up a little bit but like this one over here for example you can see this one is uncovered so uh we'll see and these receive water every other day not every day all the beds over here receive water every other day now this bed over here is a bed I, I planted a couple tomatoes in here and I weeded it a while ago so the weeds are up again in here uh, but I left some of the black-eyed Susans in here uh, because I do love them and this one I planted some tomatoes in here the borage or borage came up on its own from last year and I just moved it to the border so that it would create this beautiful border and it was beautiful in the spring and then when the heat of the summer came the plants just kind of started yellowing and not looking so well so I will be taking these out and I have here some basil again the heat is just causing them to go to seed but it's all right I'll be harvesting some I just don't want them to flower that's the thing and the strawberries you can see everything here needs tons of nutrients i did put in fertilizer but uh, the plants are just not as not looking as well as they should and now if this is how your plants look like don't be discouraged 
this is great and wonderful but for me uh, after all the years of gardening and seeing how plants should look like I kind of or look like in the method in, in my garden with a method that I use for uh, making the organic for making the organic compost and filling in the my raised beds with this organic compost and using this method I can tell that the plants are lacking in nitrogen and in other nutrients and they are not able to access those nutrients because of lack of one element or another and if, you, if this is how your plants look like don't be discouraged this is great if they are producing for you this is what matters and uh, you should be happy about that as long as they are producing count this as a win and there are you know wins and losses in gardening and everything and we have to take what we can take and be happy with it because um, you know we might not get another chance and uh, if we do get another chance we can learn from our mistakes and from our successes and move on and uh, make something even better now these two beds over here my plan for them is to be strawberry beds and I started it already with this bed over here I will have to look for a variety of strawberry that's different than this one because this one I just kind of got from the big box store and this is what they had but I want to get a good variety of strawberries that is all bearing for this bed right here and also these beds are going to have grapevines in them I tried getting grapevines last year and they were bare roots but most of them died and they didn't do anything really and I feel like most of them were kind of dead already <laughs> when I bought them so uh, I'm not going to buy bare roots again I think next time I'm just going to order them online from a trusted res from a trusted source and I'm going to uh, plant them from plants that are already pre-established so that I don't have to go through the heartbreak and losing plants and all that stuff and uh, I'll just start with a good variety and I did some research on the plants that I want to have in here of the different varieties of grapes and I'll have to do that again because I forgot what they were already and I should have written them down but I didn't so I'll have to do that again because I want to use them for all sorts of things and I uh, want good varieties of grapes for eating and it's hard to find good varieties of grapes for for table grapes in this region because the ones that are the, the ones that I love and they're like super lush and sweet and delicious are all varieties that are acclimated to the warmer climates and we are in zone 5b over here so if you guys know of a good variety that maybe is red or green variety of grapes or whatever white whatever you guys call it uh, that is hardy to zone 5 let me know in the comment section down below if you have grape plants already grapevines already uh, what varieties of grapevines do you have and which varieties do you like the most I would love to know that please let me know in the comment section down below in this bed over here I also left this fennel plant from last year so last year I cut it down uh, down to basically I don't know maybe like 10 inches or so and I left it here and I wanted to see if if it will come back and it did because where I grew up fennel was a perennial plant and I don't know if this is a perennial or biannual and it might seed itself in here if it does that's okay I'm totally fine with that and I'll keep with the plants that I want to keep next year and remove the plants that I want to remove and I just want to I wanted to do this experiment to see if it will come back or not and I had this type of fennel in here and I also had bronze fennel in this section over here and this also came back and I love the flowers on this and the wasps are loving them also <laughs> but I love the structure of the flowers super cool and the bed so this is the bed right next to this fennel over here and this bed I also have some tomatoes 
And these are very late tomatoes. I started late in the season and I haven't staked anything. Like I said, I haven't been here for a month and usually I do the single stem method for my tomatoes. And I mean, look at them, they're all sprawling on the ground. So I have to give them support, do some pruning on them. I probably won't be single stemming them because I don't wanna remove all this fruits off of them because I planted my tomatoes super late. And also this section, that bud over here, I purchased these tomatoes from a local nursery to us and um, they've been doing great and I just need to, you know, do a lot of pruning and kind of stake them up and do all that stuff. And this is one of the grapevines that survived and came back and I need to provide it with some support. This is the Niagara Falls grape and hopefully it will do well for us. And I gave it some fertilizer this um, early spring and um, it looks like it's doing good and I'm super excited about it because I not only use the grape uh, grapes themselves but I also use the grape leaves and we love grape leaves my sons and my favorite dish is rolled grape leaves and we just love it so much looks like I'm having some sort of issue over here uh, but yeah, uh, it looks like I need to address that with some sort of rust. And uh, I also had some basil in the front. Again, the heat is just making everything bolt. And uh, it looks maybe like I need to, I don't know, maybe I need to water every day. But it, I think the soil is so hard. But... I don't know. Let's see. Is there moisture in there? I don't know. It doesn't look super moist. The soil is very hard. This is soil that we bought last year. And I just need to add tons of amendments to it. And the bed behind it, that was, I think, amended last year. I left it this year because I couldn't get to it. I wanted to plant sweet potatoes in there again, but I wasn't able to. I mean, look at the weeds. They're gigantic. <laughs> They're taller than the trees. Look at that. It's it's almost the same height as that tree or even a little bit taller as a pear tree. It's crazy. Anyways, this I need to stake this grape over here. Uh, I also had some saponaria that seeded itself. I think that's how you say it. forgot. These flowers are beautiful, they're so ethereal, I just love them, so I have to clean them up, harvest the seeds from them so that I can plant them next year because I love this flower. And I don't know if I showed you guys this bed already or not, but this is also a potato bed. I had a tons of compost last year, so this was doing amazing. And uh, they're all, it looks like they needed supports because they grew so big and now they're kind of flopping on the ground but that's okay they're going to be harvested pretty soon and also some tomatoes planted themselves in here so i just let them do their thing and that's okay i was going to plant some sweet potatoes in here but i didn't get to it i still have the sweet potatoes inside so i'm going to try to do something that i've never tried before and i'll share that with you in a separate video and i don't know if this will succeed or not but i want to try it out and see and if it does succeed, then I'll share with you guys exactly everything that I did and I'll have to record everything, make sure I don't forget anything because uh, this is going to be a rev revolutionary thing for me because if it does work and if it does better, then this is the method I will be using from now on because we have a very short growing season here for sweet potatoes and if I'm able to grow them in that method, that would be wonderful. So we'll see. I'll try it out, I'll test it, and I'll let you guys know the results of that method. In this bed over here, we have uh, some Brussels sprouts and I wanted to plant a zucchini in here. I don't know, maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll have some more time left to plant a zucchini in here. Right now the weeds took over. And this is a 
wild raspberry bush so I have to stake that up I want to put some tea posts on either side so that we can put this up and this bed I want to also turn into a raspberry bed and this one right here I want to turn into a blackberry bed so the plan is I want to have lots of perennial food that will come back year after year and a lot of these are fruits of course but we love fruits and uh, you know fruits are one of the most expensive things at the store especially if you are buying organic fruits and uh, right now I what I have been doing is I've been going to farms or local our local farms and uh, nurseries and purchasing fruits and vegetables from them and right now in the fridge I have a whole pack of pickling cucumbers that I got yesterday from our local nursery and I'm going to be pickling them tomorrow using a couple different methods and I'll share this with you in a separate video so tomorrow I'll be filming that video for you guys and be on the lookout for that video it'll probably come after this video I'm not sure but that's probably what's going to happen and this black raspberry bush already has some raspberries on it some of them the bird have already already eaten so we have to make sure to net everything over here because the birds will get them before us but this is the kind of raspberries they produce but they are so delicious they're not huge but we love these raspberries and I think these are great for fresh eating and for jams and jellies and they produce clusters like these so I want to fill this bed with this variety and if this raspberry plants itself in this bed again I'm gonna let it so that we can have more of these raspberries so when these raspberries I'm gonna eat this mmm so delicious mmm tangy and delicious I love it when these raspberries put their ends in the ground the ends start producing roots so what I can do is just let it rest over here and then when the ends set themselves in the ground they will produce roots and they'll produce a, a new plant and then I can come here and cut the plant in the middle and we would have new plants over here and this plant could keep on going and raspberries produce on second year year growth now there are some varieties I think that produce on first year's growth I don't know these varieties if you know them let me know in the comment section down below if they're good or not uh, because you know it might be cool to plant something that produces the first year but it also is important to have something that tastes delicious that's my opinion I don't know if I showed you but look at these banana peppers ooh look at them amazing and the last bed over here is the pepper bed and this pepper bed is loaded with peppers loaded look at this these also were planted late but look at this pepper right here amazing and they're they all have tons of peppers on them so I'm going to be harvesting the first crop of peppers so that they can produce some more because the more you harvest the more they are going to produce and if you notice with peppers what happens is that when you let them ripen on the plant they will start changing color so this could turn into orange and then turn into red and the more ripe it is this is a banana pepper the more ripe it is the more spicy it's going to be I think I might have some jalapenos in here and some I forgot what this variety of pepper is but this I think this is so delicious what is this variety I forgot Ooh, I have some chili peppers over here oh tam jalapeno pepper what is this variety oh this is the Anaheim Anaheim chili pepper yeah so these I would like to have them ripen so that I can dry them up and use them for making chili and taco and I also want to try them green too so I'll probably take a couple of them use them inside for green peppers so we have we have all sorts of different varieties of peppers in here and in this section over here we have the 
gabanelli peppers there are just all sorts of different varieties there's the I think the Ozark the what's it called the north something pepper what's this oh yeah king of the north pepper there's the Ozark giant pepper I think yeah that's the Ozark giant over here I believe and you can tell these peppers are more gigantic than others so next to me over here I have a wheelbarrow full of chicken manure so after I harvest these peppers I'm going to take this wheelbarrow and put some chicken manure on this bed over here and also on that bed right there where the other peppers are growing because I can notice that they definitely need it I might put also some in the beds where the strawberries are growing and the tomatoes in there because it looks like those beds need it as well I wasn't thinking of doing this but also let me turn you around and just show you the fruit trees why not right <laughs> so this is our pear one of our pear trees and this year they're not bearing so many fruits but they are they do have some fruits on them and oh that's not good that is not good at all um, so some of them are doing okay I did treat these this year as well and we'll see it looks like they're oof, I really hope that I don't have fire blight but I'm not sure I am not sure at all I'll have to wait on that and see what could this be I need to do some research on all the different pear diseases because this does not look good I also noticed that branch over there broken so maybe it's just the extra water maybe it's not a disease that's happening I don't know uh, but uh, this pear tree also has tons of pears on it not as much as last year but I'm going I bought some bags for them to put under the trees they are watering bags and you just zip them around the tree and they have a tiny hole at the bottom you just set it next to your tree and it irrigates your tree for you and I was planning on putting down irrigation for the trees but because we have lawn over here I didn't want to do it this year eventually my plan is to mulch this whole area because I really hate mowing under here my husband hates mowing under these trees so I just want to mulch the whole area and then maybe I can also use the extra space for planting sunflowers corn you know all these different things and we'll still have plenty of space to walk around and to harvest the trees and to care for them as well and this apple tree over here it looks like this is the second year it starts producing but then again because I wasn't able to come and spray again on these trees with organic uh, spray it looks like they have something going on so I mean I think they are still usable this one though it looks like something dug into it already so we'll see I may just harvest them now before they before something eats them I don't know we'll see but we have some dead branches over here and on that side over there this tree also looks like it has some sort of disease going on so not happy with this but these pears though on this tree look okay to all the rain that we got that these trees started getting some disease on them that's a possibility 
It also could be just the extreme changes in the weather between the extreme heat to extreme uh, rain and cooling down at night and then extreme heat in the day and also it could be due to the drought in the spring. There are so many different things that happened in the season that could cause all sorts of diseases and issues in trees and in plants in general. So we'll see what happens. You know, this is the thing about these trees also. They are planted in a very wet area. We didn't plant these trees. When we came, when we bought this house, the trees were already here and I wasn't happy about their placement because they're placed right next to the well and this area gets super super muddy in the spring it is kind of like a swamp in here so that can lead to all sorts of different diseases to that could come on these trees and I'm not happy about that also they're right next to the vegetable garden so yes I can keep pruning on them and all that but Sometimes, like this tree right here, you know, in the summer, they get too big and I would have to come and prune them. And that can start lead, start leading uh, to it blocking the light from some of the areas in the vegetable garden over here. Now that's not a big problem because I can always plant something in the summer that doesn't like to be in the heat and that extra shade that these trees will provide can protect those plants from the heat and cause them to survive a little bit longer in the summer like maybe let's say spinach or I don't know lettuce kale stuff like that and those might like it a little bit if they have a little bit of shade now the onions over there though they're doing great they're right next to this tree so that means they are receiving enough sunlight for them to put on growth and to grow these bulbs and this tree didn't put on this growth earlier in the season but the onions also like to have lots of sunlight and this is how their bulbs grow because they receive all this energy from the sunlight and as long the days get longer that's when the onions start to bulb up and grow these big onion bulbs so i got several baskets in here i'm going to take and we are going to go to the peppers over there and harvest some peppers and whatever else we can harvest from this garden. I also don't want to forget about these gladiolas. I want to grab some gladiolas because I enjoy their blooms inside and a lot of them are kind of covered up by the plants and it's so sad you can't see them so I want to bring them inside maybe maybe make a bouquet with them or just put them on their own just to enjoy their blooms it's okay I don't they don't have to necessarily be with a bouquet but I'll get these last because I don't have any water with me to put them in and I want them to last and not wilt This carrot is giving me a hard time. The soil is super dry. It's raining, but the soil is dry, and I broke off the stem. I can't pull it up. 
so I'm gonna leave that maybe for another time. I'll get a fork or something, get it out. Let's see if we can get another one out. Without breaking the top. I'm telling you, the soil is just super dry. Ooh, nope, nope, that's not working. Look at this one though. That looks so good. <sighs> so, last time I got the carrots from here, they were all like this and even longer and slim. So, I have a couple rows here and a couple rows over there. So, I'm not going to harvest these today because clearly the soil needs to be moist before I can harvest them. I got quite a bit of peppers. And I also have some herbs in here, some basil, mint, and some of this uh, dill that I'm going to be using for preserving the pickles with. On that day also, I'm thinking of preserving some of the peppers as well. And you guys will get to go along with me and uh, go on this process of preserving all sorts of different things. And also we'll be preserving some of the mint and turning it into tea and anything that we can uh, will be preserving on that day. So I hope that this video was encouraging for you guys and showed you that even if you weren't able to be in your garden for a month or more, that your garden can still produce for you. It's producing, it's doing amazing, it's, you know, might not look how I want it to look like, and that's all right. I kind of come to accept that at this point because I really can't do anything about it. I can work from now on to make it better, but I wasn't able to be here at that time to keep it, keep up with it, to take care of all the weeds that pop up and all that stuff. And I like to keep my garden pristine looking and free of weeds and all that. And that's not always possible. So I wanna encourage you that even if you are at that stage in your life, it's better to grow something in your garden and have it produce something for you even if you are not able to be there all the time then to just let it sit there and be full of weeds even though you know i have some of those beds that are doing that just that exactly full of weeds but i still have lots of beds also that are full of food and are doing amazing things for us so if you have reached this point of this video i want to thank you for watching I want to thank you for following and also thank you so much we have reached 500 subscribers and i'm super excited thank you all so much for following along thank you for subscribing and if you haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive to receive notifications of whenever i upload new videos i want to thank you all so much for watching and thank you for again following along with me on this journey and if you like this video please go ahead and hit that like button and i will be coming again uh next week and i need to head inside before it starts storming on me uh, with another brand new brand new video i try to publish twice a week wednesdays and saturdays and i'll see you again next time bye whoa look at this one what do you guys think can i get this out I got it, I got it. Woohoo! Look at this! Amazing! Look at it. That is a big carrot. Before I forget, I wanted to mention one more thing about peppers. That you can harvest peppers at the point that they are just about ready to start maturing and you can let them ripen on your counter. They will start turning color on your counter and their flavor will change as well. They will turn red or yellow, whatever color they will turn into. So you can do that. You don't have to have them ripen on the plant. And if you harvest the peppers as they ripen, before they are fully ripened, your pepper plant will continue to produce peppers for you as long as there is no frost outside. The mosquitoes are eating me alive over here. I better head inside. <laughs>